Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. Why don't you stand as we get into some praise and worship? And sing whatever comes. Whatever comes, whatever goes, there is one thing that I know. You are faithful. Yeah, you are faithful. So I speak out your word that has the power to change my world. You're my breakthrough. You're my breakthrough. I will trust. I will trust you. I will trust you. You are God and you are there You're always with me Yes, you are You're always with me I will trust I will trust you I will trust you You are a never-ending river Flowing full of power Washing over me We've got a new song that we're going to declare this morning. It declares that the battle belongs to our Christ Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. When all I see, when all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain. See a mountain, and as I walk, and as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Oh, Jesus, there's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. This thing, so when I fight, so when I fight, I'll. Fight on my knees with 
with my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you hey. And if you are for me Who can be against me? For Jesus there's nothing impossible When all I see fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power come on let's declare it you almighty fortress you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shine in the shadows You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God An almighty fortress You go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God Shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every fear I Lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Yes, it does. The battle belongs to you. It's your breath 
Jesus. Sing one more time, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. changes you. It changes everything. 
You get this crazy energy that you don't normally have. It changes you. And I believe that for this church, there's going to be an awakening of a fiery, passionate love affair with Jesus Christ this year. And it will change us. It will change us. It will give us energy we didn't normally have. Let me read to you from Song of Songs about this fire. It reads, Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. Song of Songs 8 verse 6. This is the Saviour King, the Bridegroom King speaking to His beloved. And it represents Christ speaking to His church, Jesus speaking to you and I. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming fire will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and the grave, all consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God. What an incredible thought. There's flashes of fire in the burning heart of God. Place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. I feel like that's a word for our church this year. Place this fierce, unrelenting fire of passionate love with Jesus over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. Endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you. Everything will be consumed. It will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem like a sacrifice anymore. That's a word for you, Damien. As you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem like a sacrifice anymore. It's kind of a, it's kind of a big word to start a church service with, but it's a word I'm telling you, church, that if we can fall in love, crazy in love with Jesus and let it consume every part of our heart, every part of our being until we're just in adoration and worshipping Him. It doesn't seem like a sacrifice anymore. It motivates us, it energises us, it empowers us. And as I was reflecting on this concept of fire this morning, the Lord also spoke to me about a fire that many of you have walked through in the last year, even the past season of your life. And it's a fire that seems to have destroyed many things in your life, that it's been difficult and challenging. There's been loss and there's been challenge. And, you know, I started to look up what fires do in nature. And we're in a theme this month called renewal. And do you know, church, that fires actually renew? Fires renew the soil. They renew the ground. They renew the forest. And some of you have walked through horrific fires last year. Lucy, you've walked through a fire. But God's plan is that it would renew. I'm just gonna give you a quick, just mini science lesson before I let you sit down. Just a quick one. All right, this is what a fire does according to science. Forest fires are natural and necessary. Even healthy forests contain dead trees and decaying plant matter. That's us. We get dead stuff in us. We get decaying stuff in us. When a fire bur turns them into ashes, nutrients return to the soil. Clinton Andrea, this might be speaking to you as well. When a fire turns them into ashes, nutrients return to the soil instead of remaining captive in old vegetation. And when fire rages through dry underbrush, it clears thick growth so sunlight can reach the forest floor and encourage the growth of native species. Do you know a fire, it clears out the weeds from our heart. It clears thick growth from our hearts so the sun can reach us again. 
so the light of our Son, of the Son of God, can penetrate our heart. Okay, I haven't finished. This is pretty amazing. Um, It can reach the forest floor and encourage the growth of native species. Fire frees the plants from the competition delivered by invasive weeds and eliminates diseases or droves of insects that may have been causing damage to old growth and wildflowers begin to bloom abundantly. Isn't that incredible? These fire clears the weeds from our heart. It clears the diseases from our heart. It clears like the yucky undergrowth so the light of the sun can burn through and bring nutrients to the soil of our heart and wild flowers grow. And it continues to say that after a fire, here we go. And by the way, apparently most young healthy trees can survive a fire. It hasn't killed you people. You are here. You have survived the fire. Most young healthy trees are resilient enough to survive a forest fire and will soon have a growth spurt thanks to the flames, that thin lightning banning canopies above. All right, I'll finish here. And scientists report that young growth forests recovering from fire a home to more diverse species. And this is a word from our, for our church. Young growth, okay. Young growth forests recovering from fire, a home to more diverse species in plants and animals. This is because the remnants of burnt trees offer attractive habitats of birds and small mammals and nutrients from burned vegetation continue to leach into the soil to fuel the birth of new plants. Amen. Is anyone with me or am I just on some crazy? Okay, good, good, good. How are you going online audience? Are you with me? Are you with me? Catching the power of the fire that's burned through our city, burned through our church, burned through our lives in 2020. What God intends, what God intends, the rejuvenation of an entire forest floor to bring nutrients and home to diverse plants and animals. That's us, church. That's C3 Church City. Your ashes are food for new creation life in this church. Your story, the challenges you've walked through is the nutrient-dense food that others will feed off and come to God. All right. Gosh, I'm preaching now. Sorry, Stephen. I better stop. Okay, good. All right, that's just a little taster. That's your entree before the main meal. Welcome to church, everyone. (laughs) Um, My name is Kiralee. I'm the pastor here, the senior pastor, together with my husband, Tim. He is caring for his dad today and not with us this morning, but he'll be back next week. We have a great preacher, Stephen Morgan preaching this morning and I'd love to welcome you if you're here for the first time at C3 City or maybe it's your second time could you just lift up your hand and give a big wave if you're visiting us today hello hello great to have you at church if you want some more information about our church or if you'd like to keep in touch There's a little card in your seat pocket that you can fill out and we'll keep in touch with you about everything coming up in the life of the church. A big welcome to Henry Smith, one of our golden oldies of C3 City. Great to have you visiting us today, Henry. What a joy. Fantastic. Well, you may be seated, church. So good. How are you all going with your masks? Hanging in there, getting used to it? You all look great. Don't worry, when you get outside, you can just rip them off and chat away. It's all good. Wonderful. Well, let me tell you about a few things coming up in the life of the church. As I mentioned, we're in our Renew series and we're going to have a great message on that topic soon. 
Here at C3 City, we are super excited about 2021 because we are launching our first ever day Bible college. And we think that is a big deal. We think it's a big deal to train and equip people in the Word of God. We really believe that the church is called to discipleship, to train people in God's Word. And so we're stepping out to start a Bible college. And I just want you to look to the screens and a little bit of information about C3 College 2021 at C3 City. C3 College. From many different countries, backgrounds, and experiences. With goals, gifts, and dreams. All with a call to discover the purpose God has for us. Whether it be to preach, teach, and minister. To create, design, and invent. No matter where you are in the world, you can discover your purpose. Study leadership or creativity. Study on campus or online. Anywhere throughout the earth. Super exciting. Yeah, amazing. Uh, you know, actually, the mother hub of C3 College is over at Oxford Falls. And I went to C3 College at Oxford Falls for two years. That was the birthplace of my ministry here at the city. My husband attended C3 College at Oxford Falls. But we've always thought it's such a mission, right? To ship people over to Oxford Falls, so difficult. We are the inner city we should be having a Bible college here. And so we're stepping out to launch a campus this year. It's an internship program that involves two days of Bible teaching and lectures, one night of teaching and lectures and a day of internship. It's an immersive experience in God's Word and presence. We have chapel every week with worship. In fact, we have just, we're excited to announce that we will have a resident DJ leading us in chapel. Stand up, Lady Trey. So college is gonna look a little bit different at C3 Church City. We're gonna be using the diverse mix of gifts and creativity in this church to bring Bible college to life. And I'm excited to hear different students taking that step to commit this year to set aside for the Lord. And can I just ask those of you who have made that commitment just to stand up? Stand up, those that have committed to do Bible college. All right, okay. Okay, church, that's four here today, full-time, committed. I've been hearing their stories. It's crazy exciting. Uh, but we're believing, my husband has a crazy audacious faith goal of believing for 20 full-time students. So if you are interested, please see myself, Pastor Shirley. Shirley, stand up. Shirley is the Dean of Students. Please see myself or Pastor Shirley, and we will give you some more information. You can do it full-time or part-time. There's lots of different ways you can stru structure your study here at C3 Church. Okay, on that note, I'm gonna hand over to one of our great leaders, our music director, Dietrich Marquardt, to encourage us in our giving this morning. Welcome, Dee. Thank you, Curly. Good morning, everyone. Curly, you kind of stole my thunder with a lot of what you were saying <laughs> earlier. But um, so with the worship team, what we normally do before we get into rehearsals is that we have a bit of a time of devotional. Um, but due to some technical difficulties this morning, we kind of rushed through it. And so I thought I'd amalgamate my message with what I was going to um, share then. And that is really, where is your armor? Or what armor are you wearing during times of uncertainty? Or more specifically, where is your security um, during times of uncertainty? Um, so as we know, 2020 has been an unusual year. Um, very difficult for some, you know, others more, effect, uh, more affected than some people, but everyone felt some disruption as a result of it. And so today I wanted to share out of the Amplified version, specifically in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 9, where it talks about giving. And it says, let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart and not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. 
and delights in the one whose heart is in his giving. So really what this talks about is intentionality. You know, it says don't do it out of obligation, but give because you really decided in your heart to give and you have that conviction and belief that that is what will delight God. Um, I'm going to tie this back to the armor, trust me. Uh, so when it comes to giving in uncertain times, really what this verse is saying is give with reckless about oh, be recklessly abandoned in how cheerful you are with your giving because God is your provider. God is your source. Um, we talk about worship a lot in this church. And as Kiralee mentioned, there is, you know, there's a cleansing fire and stuff. So in Revelation 4, John has a vision of the throne room of heaven. And the first thing he mentions about the throne room is there is worship, but he also mentions fire. So fire purifies, fire cleanses, and sometimes fire exposes where we may have had idols or subtle idols in our lives. We didn't even realize it might be career and there's nothing wrong with being a diligent worker. But, you know, as a lot of people unfortunately um, found out last year is that a career is not a sure thing. But what, re what happens when we worship is we come face to face with God. And that's what John witnessed in Revelation 4. The worship pulled everyone up into the throne room of heaven. And God is the embodiment of love. The Bible tells us perfect love casts out fear. So I might rephrase that and say perfect love casts out uncertainty. Because when we tithe, it's actually an act of worship. There's a sacrifice involved. There has to be intentionality, and that's something that really delights God. And he can't help himself. Now, there is also um, a phrase in Revelation 4 which says God is worthy of our praise or our worship. But if you read the footnotes, or I was reading this in the Passion Translation, actually, it said that um, word worthy can actually be translated to mean empowered. So think of it this way. When we tithe, it's an act of worship, and that empowers God to move in and act on our behalf. And I mean, Nat and myself, we experienced this. I mean, we were talking to various people. Um, you know, it's their testimony to share, so I won't say who they are but over the weekend, but just how God has moved in and blessed them financially. Um, people losing jobs but having a nice nest egg to sit on and then just steady streams of work coming in and it's the same with Nat and I um, I mean I received a very generous bonus from work um, last year which helped us buy our house our first home but I was told by my boss afterwards the partners at the firm I work at they pushed extremely hard for that because the policy was nothing is going to be awarded if, if anything marginal pay rises um, just to recognize that people have been doing the work. So that is just an example of how God will come in and despite the circumstances, bless someone. Um, and it was a generous gift as well from work. They didn't say there were any strings attached. It's just they said they wanted to recognize the commitment. And I think that's important because it applies to our giving as well. Um, God will recognize and honor that commitment. So as we prepare to give, I just wanna pray over each one of you. Father, I just thank you for faithful, willing, and yielded hearts, Lord. Um, and Father, I thank you that as we start this new year, you will speak to everyone's heart in whatever way is necessary for them to hear and recognize it as your voice, that you are their source of provision, that you will not leave or forsake them. And so I thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cool. Why don't we stand as we get into some more worship? Beautiful name it is. What a 
beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus.
guys, quickly grab your seats. What a great way to start a new year remembering the name of Jesus and what a powerful name it is, what He's done for us. That's an incredible word that Pastor Kiralee just shared with us. And um, I was actually preparing for this sermon and I was going for a walk and this is actually isn't in my notes, I wasn't gonna share it, but a song that came on and normally I just have worship music in the background, I'm not really listening to it uh, that closely, but it was uh, light a fire within my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, Lord, I want more of you, Lord. And so I think there's a reoccurring theme here that, that God's trying to get across, this theme of fire and the purification of the fire, the burning up of the old things that are not of Him so they can be replaced by His plans and, and His purposes. So church, get excited. It's gonna be a good year. I know that a lot of us are probably very glad that 2020 is over, that we can cross that off and, and move on to a new year. And it's, it's great that it's a new year, but we also need to make a conscious decision to do things in the new year. It's not enough that the date now says 2021, that things are, are magically different and magically new. So we've got to actually do something about it. And uh, we've been on holidays. We've been away for three weeks down in sunny Victoria, uh, which actually was probably sunny compared to the, the conditions up here. And um, I was mowing the lawn yesterday and uh, I had this word that came to me that I felt God was saying that it's for us as well as a church, for us as, as individuals. And so I was mowing the lawn and I could see our garden and our fruit trees had uh, grown significantly even in just this three week period. And so the conditions that have been around, the weather conditions that I'm talking about here for now, like they're perfect for things to grow. They're, they're hot, they're humid, they're miserable, uh, they're wet. Uh, and they're, it was interspersed by these moments of sunshine. Does that sound familiar to people for how 2020 was? How there was uh, some miserable times, there's some wet times, there's some horrible times, but there are also good times uh, in there as well. And it's the perfect conditions for things to grow. And I felt God saying, we can't just wait for a season to pass. Things are gonna grow in every single season that we're going through. And we need to choose what grows in that season. Because as I was looking across my garden, there was the fruit trees that were growing perfectly in the, uh, the nutrient soil that we'd put in there. But there was also another area of our garden that's a bit more like a wasteland. And over this area, there are a lot of weeds that had grown up during this time. And it's the same for our spiritual walk. We need to choose what we're allowing to grow up during this season. We can allow fear, we can allow despair to overtake our thinking, to overtake all our thought processes and, and that, we can allow that to grow up or we can make a choice and to know that God has a good plan even if we don't understand what we're currently walking through. Just like the fire that's burning away, the ash that's going down, that's gonna cause something new and something good to grow up. We need to choose to allow those things to grow up. So going on to our theme and our uh, series for this month, it's called Renew, and it comes from Isaiah 40. And so I'm just gonna go to the Word and, and read out and draw out a few things that God's been speaking to me on. You know, this passage is an incredible passage. It'd be a good thing for a Connect group to do a Bible study on, because there's so much that you can draw out of you. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna scratch the surface of what I feel God is asking me to share with people this morning. So I'm gonna start in verse 26. It says, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these things? He brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. I think too often our eyes are focused down on our problems and we can't see a way through rather than lifting our eyes up to our creator who we know has a good plan and a good purpose for us. It goes on, why do you complain? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded from my God. Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. You know, you might be going through a season right now that you can't understand 
what God is trying to take you through. It might be incredibly difficult. You might have been going through this fire right now that's burned up everything that you thought was good in your life. The amazing thing is that God takes that and causes good to come from it. And we can't always fathom or understand what his purposes are, but we do have this hope that they are good. It goes on, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they'll run and not grow weary, they'll walk and not be faint. I know sometimes when you start a new year, you're excited, you feel refreshed, you feel re-energized after a holiday, but I think after 2020, a lot of us are starting this new year feeling tired, feeling worn out, and that's why we've got this series where we're focusing on renewal, refreshment, and how we get that so that we can refocus and retarget where God wants us to lead in this year. So how do we actually do all this? And it's really counterintuitive. Often the world tells you to get through an issue, to get through a problem, you need to strive, you need to go hard. Go hard or go home. Press in, keep going, keep going, don't stop. You know what the word actually says? Sometimes we need to actually stop, to be still, to wait on God, to wait and hear what He's saying to us, to be in His presence instead of striving and trying to be soaking and resting in his presence because that's where renewal and refreshment comes from. We need to wait. We need to wait to hear his voice and his direction for this year. And it all comes from this hope that we have, a hope in Jesus. So refreshment and renewal, the first thing that I wanna talk about and how do we actually do this? Right, if you go back to verse 26, it's the start of this passage and it gives us the key to this. It says, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? As I was saying before, often we get so caught up on the here and now and a lot of the problems and the issues that we're going through are big for our strength and our capacity. But the good thing is when we lift up our eyes to heaven, when we lift up our eyes to Jesus Christ, there is a way through no matter what you are going through. How can we just wait and stop? We can do it because we know that Jesus is in control of our destiny. He's in control of everything that we're going through. He sees the plans. He sees what we're going through, even if we can't fathom what we're going through. And what he has for us is good. You know, it says in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And it goes on, I'm not gonna read the whole Psalm, but it goes on into verse 10. I just wanted to give you some context before I get to this. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So what does it mean to actually be still? My wife uh, did a talk on this during the height of COVID. She was uh, preaching to the incredible women on their six o'clock or 6.30 uh, morning prayer service that they did week after week after week. Amazing commitment by them and it's probably a testament to why our church has flourished during this time because people have prayed, they're pressed into to God's heart for this season. So we should, uh, I don't know, it's incredible that the women of our church have been praying during all of this and that's the real backbone behind the church is prayer. And so she went and she did a bit of research into what this be still means because in, a, in our uh, context, in our Western context, we think be still means to sit down, to just relax, to, to not do anything. But in the Hebrew where it's talking about this, be still is more an active thing. It means to let go, to release all your troubles, all your worries, everything that you're going through, to stop striving, to stop trying to do it in your own strength. And to, the key to knowing, the key to being able to do all this 
goes back to the start of the psalm where it talks about who God is. We can't do this if we don't know who God is, if we don't believe that He is our refuge, that He is our strength, that He is, that we don't need to fear because He is with us, that He is our fortress, that He is our deliverer. You can't let go of everything that you're holding on to and worrying about if you don't know that He is for us and not against us. So how do we actually do this? You know, I've always found it helpful uh, when you're wanting to hear the voice of God is to get out of the house I know it's probably different for us having kids, but being in the house is generally not the most peaceful environment to hear the voice of God when there's kids running around and screaming. And we do have amazing kids, don't get me wrong, but they're very energetic and uh, need a lot of taking care of. So what I've always found really helpful is to get out of the house and to get out into nature and to spend time with God. You know, when I'm preparing for a sermon, I actually don't go to my desk and sit down and get out the computer and start typing things up. The first thing I do is to get out of the house and to try and stop and to hear what God's saying, to hear what He wants to say uh, to our church, to me, uh, and, and for our relationship with God. I think this is such a practical way to do it, is just to stop and to put on worship music. Often, if you're one of the people that hears worship music and st- just starts worshiping, I'd encourage you to put on some music without words, or maybe just uh, don't even listen to any music, but be out in nature and ask God to speak to you. Quiet your mind. And I've always found it really helpful on these things, not to start praying and to to putting all my cares and, and asking God for what I want, but just to stop and to wait and to hear Him and ask Him what He wants to speak to me. Because when you hear His voice, All our troubles, even though they could be incredibly big, they get put into perspective when you hear his voice. Instead of focusing on how big our problems are, which in our capacity they can be huge, the focus changes to how big our God is and the plan and the purpose that he has for us. I often find it amazing how easy it actually is to hear God's voice when you go out. And it's not an audible voice all the time, with some people hear an audible voice. For me, he directs my heart and my thoughts. And I know that it's him because he directs me to certain things that I'm not thinking about that wouldn't be my thoughts. He prompts me uh, to do certain things. And I'd just encourage you, at the start of a year, when you're thinking of big decisions, when you're trying to focus what you're gonna do this year, seek God, put that time aside to seek Him. You know, it might be an hour, it could be a week that you're spending searching for Him and asking Him what He wants to do in your life. That is the best investment you could ever make at the start of the year. So re-energizing. So the first thing that we've done, we've refreshed We've seeked God out. We've, uh, we've got renewed a little bit from that. And uh, this is an ongoing process. It's not a, a two-minute task that you do. You tick it off and you're done for the year. You're good. It's an ongoing process. A so week after week, you need to keep seeking Him, keep getting refreshed. So it goes back in Isaiah. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You know, 2020 might have been an incredibly tiring and not uh, a nice year for you. And because of that, there's worries that you're holding on to. There's a lot of uh, cares that you're holding on to. And you don't actually realize how much these things are weighing you down. Because it might start as a small problem that you're carrying, and then you start carrying your family's problem, and then your friends come to you with the problem, you start carrying that problem. You go to your workplace, You take on another worry and all of a sudden these things just slowly start adding up and you can't realise why you're getting weighed down, why you start looking down at the ground, why you start looking at all these problems that you have and why you can't see, why you can't focus on God our Creator. You know, it says in 1 Peter 5, verse 7 and 10, it says, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. And it goes on in verse 10 to say, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, 
and steadfast. Now that's a verse for us for this year, church. As you release your cares and your worries, as we're talking about before, being still, you release your cares and your worries. It releases a weight. You can let go of all your problems because you have a God who cares for you and has a plan for you, even if we can't fathom it yet. And you know, when you do that, He restores you. He makes you strong, firm, and steadfast. I know for me, that's how I wanna live this year, being strong, firm, and steadfast. And it's not in our own strength, it's not in our own strivings, it comes from letting go and letting God be God of your life. You know, I remember this uh, story at Pilgrim's Progress. It actually showed this, this concept of you got this backpack, you got this weight of sin, you got this weight of the worries and the cares of the world, and you actually take it off, it gets cut off. And I still remember, I haven't read this book since I've been a kid, but there's this, he's way down, he's down like this, how I was before. These cares and these worries get cut off in the rivers of grace. And then he's able to stand upright, he's able to look at the horizon, he's able to look at the plans that God has for him. My daughter loves going on monkey bars. And so she loves uh, going up, she loves the heights, but she can't do it by herself at the moment. So she hangs on to the bar and then calls out for help. You know, she could just keep hanging on to that bar. You know, if you, you're eventually going to run out of strength and you're going to fall. But you need to actually go. You need to let go. And you know, as you move forward on monkey bars, I know for a lot of us, it's probably been a long time since we've been on monkey bars. But as you go, you're holding on with one hand. You've probably got two hands up there. You've got to let go with one of them before you can move on to the next one. You can't hold on tight because you won't go anywhere and you will eventually fall. And it might be scary to let go of what you're holding on to, but it's the only way to move forward. The awesome thing is, like with my daughter, uh, she, she does go, but she knows that I'm standing right there under her to catch her. That's why she's able to go, because she knows that if she falls, I'm there to catch her. And it's the same with our Father in heaven. When He calls us to something, He's not just uh, calling us to fail. He's there to hold us up when we can't do it in our own strength. He's there to catch us when we fall. And you know, when Ivy uh, falls and I catch her, we often, we don't go back to the start. I lift her back up to the bars and I tell her to go again. And it's the same with our Father. He lifts us up, He puts us back on our path and He calls us to go again and gives us the strength to do that. few people are excited by that. <laughs> the second part of this thing about being re-energized is hope. Now it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The amazing thing about hope is we have something good to place our hope in. We have a Father in heaven who sent His only Son to die for us he did that because he wants to be in a relationship with us. He did that because he has an incredible plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. He did it because he didn't want to spend eternity without each and every one of us. That's what we're placing our hope in. You know, it says in Psalm 23, verse three, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. It goes on another psalm, Psalm 37, verse nine. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. You know, church, we have something incredible to place all our hope in. It's, inc it's awesome that we don't have to place our hope in our own capacity, in our own skills, in our own families, in our, the people around us, even in this church. This church is an incredible church, but if you're placing your hope in this church, you will be let down because it's made up of people who aren't perfect. You know, if you put your hope in our Father in heaven, you will not be put to shame. You know, when we put our hope in our Father in heaven, He has incredible plans. His timing is different from ours and sometimes we're called to be patient, sometimes we're called to press in, 
Sometimes we're called to wait, which is what we're talking about today. But when you put your hope in the Lord, His promises are yes and amen. His answers to our prayers might not be what we're expecting, but the amazing thing is His answers are better than anything we can ever hope or dream of. His, his plans for our life are better than what we can dream of. So we're placing our hope in our God, in our Creator. So what do we do next? So we're, we're talking about being refreshed, we're talking about being renewed, we're talking about re, being re-energized. And sometimes these things can come from being filled with the Holy Spirit once. Sometimes we've got to go on a journey of renewal. But what do you do once you've experienced all of this? It allows you to retarget and to refocus on what God is calling you to achieve. You know, God is calling us as a church to be a light for the city of Sydney, to be a light in the darkness so that this city can see the hope of Jesus Christ and that it can be saved. God has different plans and different purposes for each and every one of us. And it's up to us to hear his voice so that we know where to go. You know, God might have spoken prophecies over you over this year that you haven't seen come to pass yet. It doesn't mean that the person who gave that prophecy was wrong. It might just be that God's timing is different from our timing. I know when when you get a prophecy, it's exciting. You feel re-energized, you feel revitalized. You're ready to go again. And so you start pressing in, but then you don't see the prophecy come to pass that week. And so you go again, you press in, you do another week. You go, yes, God, I'm believing for this prophecy to come to pass. And it might not come to pass. A month goes by, it still might not have come to pass. And so by now, you might be feeling a bit discouraged. You might be thinking, oh, maybe that person who gave that prophecy hadn't heard clearly from God. Church, we need to go again. We need to step into the prophecies. You know, some prophecies take years to come to pass. It doesn't mean that the prophecy was wrong. It means that we need to step in and trust our God. We need to know who our God is. We need to know the name of Jesus. We need to know that He has good, perfect plans for us because then we can hold on to these prophecies. So it talks in Isaiah, going back to that passage, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit again, we can go again. So I know for, for us, for Tish and I, it's always helpful to take stock at the start of the year and to refocus. What do you want to achieve for the year? I know for, for us, as for businesses, at the start of the year, you're often doing a budget. You're resetting your three and your five year plan. And I don't think it should be any different for us as a church and for us as individuals. You know, God calls us, our life goal, our life purpose is to become more like Jesus. But as you're doing that, there's different things that you can put in place, little steps that you can take every single day, month by month, year by year to get there. You don't suddenly become more like Jesus. It's a process of being filled by the Holy Spirit, by answering His call, by taking those little steps. And when you look back at your life, you're actually amazed by how much you've grown. It might not feel like you're growing a lot year by year, but when you look back from that moment when you're first saved, you go, wow, God has changed me so much. I was listening to a podcast that had absolutely nothing to do with God. It was, uh, it was just something completely different, but one thing on there stuck. And I was talking about being intentional. Because when, you when you're intentional, things get done. When you're not intentional, you end up coasting along. And before you know it, the year has passed. So what can you do this year to make a difference, to make it a year of change, a year of transformation? You know, we've got a lot of things in this church to help you as individuals to grow into becoming more like Jesus Christ. You know, if you knew at our church, we've got our next steps, which are on this wall. 
believe, belong, become and build. We actually have a pathway for you to become more like Christ. So if you're new at this church, I would encourage you to go along to what we call Next Steps, which is all about discovering your place and your purpose and your gifting and your calling. So if you haven't done that, I'd encourage you to register and go along to that. Another incredible way, connect groups. You know, we're not meant to just do Sunday church and that's it because Sunday church, an hour on a Sunday isn't enough for you to, to grow. It isn't enough for you to connect with other people in the church. It's not enough for you to grow with other believers so that you can become more like Christ. So we have connect groups midweek. And so if you're not in a connect group, make sure you talk to a leader afterwards to get into a connect group. We've got Zoom connect groups. We've got connect groups that meet in person. There's something for everyone. And I just encourage you to become a part of that because that's where real deep connection and spiritual growth can happen because we can go deeper into a passage like this rather than me just speaking quickly on it on a Sunday morning. What else can you do? Oh, we've got night college. We've got C3 college. You know, we're just seeing that before. Maybe it's your year to commit, to put in an investment of your time and to seek God, to seek His plan and His purpose. You know, a lot of us, we're going to live for many, many years. And so a commitment of a year, a commitment for a couple of days, a week for a year, isn't a huge commitment in the big scheme of things. So for the guys that have committed to doing that, well done, that's incredible. I can't wait to see what God imparts in you in this year and how he transforms your life because of this commitment. For other people, if you wanna go along to that, get involved. You know, what else do we have? You know, we have an incredible army of volunteers that make this Sunday service actually happen. We've got the worship team that lead us in worship, that march ahead of us and uh, open the floodgates of heaven so that we can hear the voice of God on a Sunday. If you're musical, I'd encourage you to get involved there. You know, we've got a service team. We've got people with cameras. We've got the sound guys at the back. Church doesn't happen without these people. We've got the screens. We've got people setting up chairs. There's... An incredible way. There's, you can't tell me that there isn't a way for you to get involved in the life of the church. And you know, the incredible thing about volunteering is that you get planted in this place. You know, Tish and I, when we first joined this church many years ago, the first thing I did to get involved was setting out chairs, packing up chairs. I just wanted to be involved in something because that's how you meet other people. That's how you get planted. That's how you... You retarget, you refocus for this year. The important thing, guys, it doesn't matter what you do. The important thing is taking that next small step to becoming more like Christ because that then enables you to take the next step. And before you know it, you're taking bigger steps. It starts with one small step and that's how the journey commences. So this year, I'll just encourage you to you know, do something different. Don't just take it as another year. You know, you could just say 2021, it's a brand new year. You get excited about it at the start of the year and then you look back on it at the end of the year and you go, what have I actually achieved? You know, God is lighting a fire in this church. He's lighting a fire in our souls to do something incredible, to do something different, to do something that caused permanent and meaningful change in this city and in the lives around us. So church, I'll just encourage you to, to get on board. You know, I'm gonna invite the, the worship team to come up. You know, maybe this year, at the start of the year, you're feeling absolutely exhausted. You feel like you've just crawled across the finish line of 2020. You feel like you don't feel like you've had a holiday. You don't feel revitalized. You don't feel refreshed. Maybe you feel tired of striving to do everything in your own strength. Maybe you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about and you haven't experienced being able to cut off all your cares and all your worries. You don't know this Saviour who loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you just so that He could have a relationship with you. And this morning, I wanna give you a chance to experience this for the first time to start a new journey, to start the year afresh. You know, 2020, we can leave the bad things in the past and we can start anew. We can start something fresh. And so if that is you this morning, that you don't know Jesus, you don't know what it's like to have a relationship with Him, 
You don't know what it's like to cut off all your sin, to cut off all your worry and to go into this river of grace that I mentioned. You know, I wanna give you a chance this morning to say yes to Jesus. It's really simple. It's, the journey starts with one step. A relationship with Jesus starts with one word, yes. You know, He's standing at the door of your heart. He's there knocking. He wants to come in, but it's up to you. He gives us a choice to say yes to Him. And I can guarantee you, when you say yes, it'll be a life like you've never experienced before. Get ready for a life like no other. It's a life, it's not an easy path to choose. It's actually a harder path to choose than living the way of the world, but it is a better life to live. And so I'm gonna ask everyone here to, to close your eyes around this room. And if that's you this morning, if that's you in your living room right now, I'd encourage you to, to say yes to Jesus. And I'd love to pray with you. So if you're in this room, can you be so bold to stick up your hand just so that I know that I'm praying with someone here this morning. I'll give you a moment just to, to hear Jesus calling, to hear that knock on your heart of the Saviour of the world who has good plans for you this morning. So if that's you this morning, why don't you be so bold to stick up your hand so that I can pray with you. If that's you in your living room, all you need to do is say yes to Jesus this morning. You know, there's another group of people here that I wanna pray for and I'd love to have a ministry time up the front, but in the current uh, health restrictions, we can't do that. But it doesn't matter because the Holy Spirit can fall on you wherever you are in this room right now, wherever you are in your living room, wherever you are in the world right now. And maybe you like you're living for Jesus, but you need refreshment. You need something new. You need to let go of all your cares and all your worries. And I wanna pray for you this morning to do that. And there's another group of people. I just wanna let you recommit to Jesus. Maybe you knew Him before. Maybe this year has been so tough that you haven't been walking as closely with Him as what you would like. This morning is your chance to start anew and to start afresh. And so I'm gonna pray this morning for each and every one of us right now. Father, I just thank You that Your presence is here. Holy Spirit, and I just pray for You to fill us anew. I just pray for a fire to be lit in our soul again, a fire that we can't let go, that we can't contain, that we can't control. I just thank You, Holy Spirit, that You're filling us anew. Holy Spirit, I thank You for those people this morning who want to make a commitment to follow You for the first time. We just thank You that they are willing to say, yes. Thank you that they're willing to cast all their cares and all their worries on you. We just thank you that you are for us, that you are not against us, that you have a good and perfect plan. And we, we let ourselves go before you. We say yes to you. We say no to the, our own way of living. God, I just pray for refreshment for people who have crawled across the finish line. Thank you that 2021 is a new year. Thank you that we have a choice that we can make to make this year different. Thank you that, Holy Spirit, you can refresh us. So Holy Spirit, right now we pray for a refreshment over this church. We pray for renewal as we wait. We pray for new words, new prophecies to be revived in our hearts right now. And God, I just pray that we commit to something. Pray that we commit to starting this journey again, that we commit to that first step, that we commit to doing something new this year that takes us closer to You. Father, I just thank You that You are a good God who loves us. We commit this year to You. We thank You that You are for us and that You are not against us. We thank You that You are a loving God we declare that this year we're willing to live for You. We're willing to go Your way and not our own way. Help us to hear Your voice. Help us to wait on You. We just declare all these things in Jesus' Name. Amen. Thank You, Father. Thank You, God. Sing. Almighty Fortress, you 
go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of